Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and we will jump over to Fusion 360 shortly. We are looking at an image of something, this is from Reddit, maybe that's a question. I like to do basic things like this sometimes because it's really important to understand the basics of geometry shapes before you just try to do all the stupid things I do in other videos. Uh, let's have a look at this part in front of us. Doesn't look that strange. Uh, from if I correctly read the question, this is like a from a piezo steamer or something like that is supposed to come up water here, or water vapor, and this is sits on top. We can't see the effects in the inside geometry, so I'm doing some assumptions. My assumption is that this is a shell structure. So this is just an outer shell with a cutout here. So we have outer shell. So one of the tools we might use is shell. So we're going to start there. Um, let's have a look at the basic shape we have in front of us. We have a symmetry around an axis. Shall we draw an axis? We can do it green. So looking at this, there should be a center axis going down through. This is basically a cylinder. We have like a profile. Let's go to red. Uh, we, we could do this with a chamfer or something like that. But basically we have like a profile with a flat top. We have an angle corner. It goes down. And when we close the profile again. And we can use revolve. Because we have symmetry around an axis. And the first tool we should think of is revolve. I'm going to remove these things now. Uh, the second thing we have, we have this cut out here. And we have a look at this. We can see that the cut out here is following the curvature of our cylinder. That means that this uh, cut out is also symmetric around our earlier center axis. And I suspect if we have a look at the edge, you can see it's not like a full fillet. There's a short straight and then there's a fillet. I suspect that these edges here are uh, concentric or aligned to the center line so these are just basically an angle and let's remove all the stuff i just draw i shouldn't be doing small lines because they are hard to move anyway this is like the basic shape so we're going to try to recreate this and when we start recreating things nothing to do start by removing all fillets so i'm going to forget about the corner fillets here line uh these four I would not do that, and we can see that it looks like there's a small fillet, so let's forget about them for now. We're going to go over to Fusion, move things around like that, and first things to do, of course, I have all this saved file, all this start by saving. If you're going to use this in some other type of assembly, start by creating a component. I will not do that, I will do this as a one-off now, so we start by creating a sketch. Uh, we talked earlier, we have symmetry of a center axis, and I like to model it like it's on the table here. So we're going to do look at our little cube up here, so we're going to do a sketch from the front. Going to do some lines, so we're going to do the basic outer shape. We have like the center here, so from our region, we're going to start with the center, we're going to go straight up. This is going to be half a radius. Angle face, we're going to down, so just for ease, adding constraints, I'm going to move over to the center line and pick that up. You can see this dashed line move out until I get parallel constraint of a line there and over here. It gives me uh, the perpendicular and the vertical constraints. It helps me adding constraints. I'm going to click escape to stop the line tool and fusions to stop messing around with me. Uh, this line here is the center of this shape so for ease i'm going to make this line and tell fusion this is a center line this adds a small feature which you will soon see we can do it now we're going to hit we're going to do dimensions you can start it up here or hit d on the keyboard you can say it's the same thing we're going to do dimension if we now select the center line and this line here fusion as I told you, it's a center line. Automatically, it turns this into a diameter dimension because if we're going to measure the true part to the left, it's much easier to measure the full diameter and not trying to mess in, measure some strange uh, uh, radius or something. So, uh, let's say we're going to do this 80. That's for the full diameter. I have auto scale of sketches activated. You can set that in your preferences. That means the full sketch is getting scaled. Uh, another easier dimension, of course, is the high field. Let's do that 40. We can measure the height on the outside face here. So this here is supposed to be, yeah, let's do it 30. No, strange signs like that. And we could also measure the diameter of this here. So we're going to dimension the diameter here. We could do that uh, 
50 so you get a bit of an angle of this face so we don't really care about the angles of the face we can get this shape by simply measuring normal distances no strange uh, uh, angles or stuff finish sketch we're gonna find the revolve tool that's up here if you can't find things hit s on the keyboard start typing the feature looking for revolve and it's the blue one for solid so we'll select that uh, i've earlier done playing around with things here so i'm going to switch our type here make sure it's full so i get the full revolve of a body hit ok I'm going to open up my browser so i can see the things we have a fully defined sketch we have a lock on and things like that uh, I have turned off auto hide in my sketches, so I will hide this sketch now. I'm not needed for now. Uh, before I do the shell, if you're doing the shell command, I prefer to do the fillets before because then the fillets will propagate to the inside of the shape if that's needed. So F on the keyboard for fillets. I'm going to apply fillets to these two edges here. Two millimeters, maybe a bit too much. Oh, let's have two millimeters. Hit OK. Let's find the shell command. It's up here or S on the keyboard, search for shell turn around the part, we can look at the on, um, underside which is going to open up, so let's do, should we do one millimeter? no, sorry, what said, one millimeter thick or maybe 1.5, just for the fun of it so we have a 1.5 thick shell, hit OK we now have like our basic shape of things going to go back to the home view uh, now we need to cut out here so we're going to create a new sketch once again we create it from the front so i'm going to look is this plane here now we need to get this body into the sketch I'm going to hit s on the keyboard because uh, it's a it's up here and create and stuff like that i like s on the keyboard and start typing in intersect i want to have the intersection of the body through the sketch plane so i'm going to click intersect select body selection field you can do geometry or body so i'm going to do the body click the body, hit OK and for visibility I'm gonna hide the body because it gets a bit confusing there's a lot of things going on, I really the slot here is only one side, so I don't need the geometry over here so I'm gonna just select it and hit delete on the keyboard uh, from left to right selection you need to, you see it only selects for points, if I'm doing selection from right to left it selects everything it touches and in this case I, I only read these two lines here. I need the two sides of his face here. So I will do a window like this. Hit delete. Do the same thing. Uh, let's do it here like that. And delete that. So I'm only left with the lines I'm interested in. Do L on the keyboard. We're going to do a line. So this needs to be perpendicular. We can see the perpendicular constraints pops up. We can do here. And the easiest dimension, of course, is the width of the slot here. So you can D on the keyboard, select the two lines. And let's do that 8 millimeters. Uh, the next dimension can be a bit harder. We can always go back and change dimension. So I'm going to dimension it simply between these two. Like I um, suppose that's 2.5, just for the fun of it. Remember, <coughs> we can always go back and change dimensions. That's the whole idea of parametric modeling. <coughs> sorry for my Saturday morning voice uh, activate body there's our sketch once again this uh, cutout as we talked earlier are symmetric around the center axis so we're going to S on the keyboard and find the revolve command again revolve it has already selected the profiles for us because it's, I only had one sketch open it says one close profile yeah you want to revolve that yes please axis we can select the axis or if we are lazy we can basically select any round edge out here you see it highlights the, edge, uh, the faces of a part so if i select this face it understands what i want to do but now we don't want to do a full revolve we want to do an angle revolve so i have turned this uh, normally you start with one side you can do it one sided that's no problem if you want to keep things symmetric you can switch it over to symmetric but you can see switching from one side to symmetric it becomes twice as wide because the angle you're given here is only the angle in one direction so doing symmetric like this with 30 degrees this opening will cover 60 degrees i hit ok gonna have a look at the shape so we can see if we compare these two i would like this edge here to be further down 
So what I can do now, I can go in and edit the sketch, one possibility, or I still have a sketch visible, so I can right click, say show dimensions, and the dimensions pop up here. So without the necessity to go back and edit the sketch, I can directly edit the dimension here. So let's change that to 10 millimeters. Is that more what I want? Yeah, that's close to what I want. So I'm gonna hide the sketch. The last thing, of course, we're gonna round off the corner. So F on the keyboard once again to find the filler command. Select the little edges, there's four of them. You can do half of them, a mirror and stuff like that. It's like only four edges. It's a bit easier to select edges because, of course, you go back, you have one fillet command, you can find all the edges. Three millimeter fillet, yeah, something like that. Gonna hit OK and have a look at my model. So, this is how I would model a shape like this. Look at there. I think, uh, I think I like to get this opening wider. We can do two ways. We can edit the revolve command. If you don't want to mess too much with the model, there's an option going to modify, change parameters. I haven't done any parameters as shown earlier, but fusions are saving all the sorry, all the numbers we are putting into the model. So we can open here under model parameters, find the revolve, and here is our angle. And it's done in two directions. This symmetry is basically in two directions. So we can change this to 40, tab over, oh sorry, not 400, <laughs> 40, 40, that's maybe too much, 35, 35, or we can do like this too, if we want to change this one, we should be able to pick up the D16, D16, like that, it follows, now we can change only this parameter, 30 like earlier, but I think 35 is better for the design in this case. So you can play around with your uh, parameters directly. They are always saved in the, on the modify, change parameters. You can find all the dimensions you've been putting into the model if you are working with the timeline on, which you should always do. So that were some Saturday small basic things. I hope it will be some parts of this work and can be useful for you. Hope to see you around. See you. Well, goodbye. Hi.